Asalaamu Alaikum. Right, we're going to do take two on this show tonight. My name is Rebecca Masterton. You're watching Ahlul Bayt live on Ahlul Bayt TV. Sorry, the sound just went a little bit earlier. My guest is Dr. Ali Al Hilli, and tonight we're going to be talking about concentration in prayer. But before we continue, we just wanted to again ask uh, our viewers to read Surah Al Fatiha uh, for Imam Abdullah Dadu, who has uh, been sadly killed in Belgium. We pray and beseech uh, all Muslims around the world of whatever school of thought to wake up to the fact that killing is not going to resolve anything. Uh, please read Fatiha for Imam Abdullah Dadu. And uh, we send condolences uh, to his uh, family uh, as well. Um, to continue with the with the topic, um, the concentration in 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 prayer. Uh, as I said before, we came back on air. Um, this is the issue of salah is so central, and yet um, we we really don't give it enough thought. I think. Uh, so tonight, inshallah, we're going to be talking a little bit about, first of all, you wanted to raise um, the aspect of submissiveness in prayer or khushu. Um Can I ask, first of all, why you wanted to raise this and, and what is the definition? A'udhu billahi minash shaitan ar-rajim. Bismillahi ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala muhammadin wa ala ahli baytihi al-tayyibin al-tahirin. I'd like to first of all also send my condolences to the family of uh, the Imam who was uh, killed uh, in Belgium uh, today uh, and it's a great tragedy unfortunately to see such a uh, terrible uh, event happening and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to unite this ummah to bring people together and to remove this hatred from people's hearts. Mm -hmm. <coughs> um, I started thinking a lot about uh, concentrating in prayer a few years ago uh, when it struck me that uh, we pray five ta three times a day, five prayers a day, and uh, it's a daily process. You know, and wake up in the morning, we pray Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib, Isha. But then again, you start to feel how much am I getting out of this prayer? You know, is it really benefiting my life? Why am I doing this? Is it just a physical exercise where you get up and go down and things like that? Um, or is there something, if there is some benefit in my salah, then why am I not getting this benefit? Yeah. Is there something wrong in my salah? Am I doing it not, you know, incorrectly? So all these questions came in my mind and I thought, surely there must be an answer. Surely there must be something that I'm doing wrong. So I went on and on on a journey to try to investigate further into what's going on. So when you, when you try to investigate further, we've all heard so many lectures about Salah and Khushu'a from our ulama uh, and the respected uh, scholars, but, um, but you know, when we hear about them, you know, we understand that you know, the Salah is important, yeah. we have to pray five times a day, you know, it's a, one of the pillars of Islam, etc., etc. But have we actually paused for a second? Right in our fast, fast-moving life, it's such a fast-moving life, you know. Um, have we actually paused and just thought for a few minutes? We do some tafakkur, contemplation, which is very important. Yeah. Right. Just think about what am I doing here? What am I doing when I approach the salah and say Allahu Akbar until I say Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh? Right. What What's happening here? Mm -hmm. Is it just because, as I said, because, you know, uh, I have to because I'm a Muslim? So, you know, when people come and tell me, ask me, what, what are you doing going up and down and things like that? I tell them, well, you know, it's part of our faith and we have to do that. Yeah. Is that the answer? Or is it much more deep than that? Um, I think it's much more deep mm. than that. In fact, it's not me who thinks much more deep than that. It's when, the, when you read the Quran, it tells you it's much, much more deep than that. And as you rightly said, is the concept of al-khushu' and salah.
There is a difference between a salah that you just pray for the sake of praying because you're a Muslim and you have to pray, mm. right? And there's a difference also between a salah that has this khushu in it. A salah, when you approach a salah, you are in an environment where, where you do not pay attention to anything else that is happening around you, yeah. but only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your heart is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? There's a huge difference between the two. And I am pretty sure uh, brothers, and, brothers and sisters who are watching this uh, will, un will really um, relate to what I'm actually talking yeah. about. Because this, this issue, everyone, is, inshallah, is, is actually practicing it. You know? So when someone talks about these things, people will say, you know, they actually relate to this. Mm -hmm. They think, yeah, you know, this is, this is, this is, this is you know, my, my salah was like this. It should be like this. Or In the Quran, if we start off, uh, with the Holy Quran, it's beautiful ayat in the Quran. When we go back to the Quran and we try to investigate this issue about al khushu' in Surah Al Mu'minun, right? Surah Al Mu'minun starts off uh, talking about who are the Mu'minun, the true Mu'minun, right? Uh, who are the true believers? And it says at the start, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, qad aflah al Mu'minun. At the start, it says that the believers are eventually uh, victorious. Yeah. They will win. And when you first start to read that, you think, yes, fantastic, I'm a mu'min. I've called myself a mu'min. Yeah. I'm going to win. I am victorious. I am victorious over all the non-mu'mineen. But then again, wait, I tell you. Go to the next ayah. It says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Qad aflah al-mu'minun alladheena hum fi salatihim khashi'un. That's the first thing. Then I ask myself, and I ask my brothers and sisters, are you still the mu'min you thought you were in mm -hmm. the first ayah? Basically saying those who, who have khushu in their salah. Absolutely. Yeah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not say, الَّذِينَ هُمْ يُصَلُّونَ Those who just pray. Because inshallah all of us pray. But there's a very, very, very important difference between الَّذِينَ هُمْ يُصَلُّونَ and الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ خَاشُونَ yeah, yeah. Those who actually have khushu' in their salah. Now, this poses a very in interesting question. It says, does that mean that I'm not a mu'min if my salah doesn't have khushu'? Yes, that's what it means. That's not mm -hmm. my interpretation. Go back to the ayah. This yeah. is what it means. It means that if you, are not, if you do not have khushu' in your salah, then you're not really a mu'min. And this is striking. It was really striking for me when I first read about it. I thought, surely I'm a mu'min, yeah, I'm praying. Yeah, yeah. yeah, right? But then you think, no, you're not. If you really don't have this khushu' in your salah, you're not a mu'min. So what is this khushu'? What is it? Mm. What is this khushu' that, that Al-Quran is talking about? What, what is missing in my salah? Now, the concept of khushu' very, very simply, right, is this uh, relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your heart and mind, right? It's, I can't describe it in words. I think every single mu'min, inshallah, every single mu'min, every single believer will understand yeah. what this khushu' means. There isn't an English word that, you know, we talked about submissiveness, yeah. right? We, we can talk about, devo uh, you know, devotion to Allah subhanahu wa sincerity and things like that. Mm. But there isn't one word. If you go back to the dictionary, it says, oh, Al khushu doesn't have an English translation, right? Al khushu is just this relation. This your your heart is related to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and your mind during salah, right? You're in a completely different environment. Let me give you an example. Al uh, imma when they used to pray, especially when they used to be in, in you know in prisons, when the, the, the you know the, the the leaders of their time used to take them. Uh, to, to prison yeah. and imprison them unjustly. They used to uh, fast during the day and pray during the night, right? But it, it was the, this, uh, narrated that our imma used to, when they used to pray, their eyes used to go red after the, you know, because of their weeping, their mm. crying. Uh, their feet used to go blue because of the, 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 the time they stand. Uh, their face used to go yellow, etc. They, they used to change color because they're in completely they're somewhere else. Yeah. 
Imam Ali alayhi salam, Amir al-Mu'mineen, they, when he was during the battle, uh, when the time of prayer used to come, he used to go and pray. But then, when he was praying, the enemy used to hit him with arrows and things like that. And then the, the people with him, they used to come and take the arrows off him. And then when he used to finish the prayer, they come and tell him, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, didn't you feel all this? He said, do you not know who I am talking to now? Do you, not, do you not know who I am in front of now? Yeah. We don't have, I don't, well, I can say for myself, no. I don't have such a no. concept where when I say Allahu Akbar, if someone actually comes and hits me, I say, oh, I don't feel that. Yeah. I'm completely somewhere else. I haven't reached that. But this is the, the ultimate reach of al khushu and Salah. This is where the, your, your heart and mind is completely devoted to Allah mm. subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's, it's not just, um, I mean, it says here, you know, uh, absence of haughtiness or humility or it says here a complex of different morals feelings and intentions all of which are directed to uh, Allah the fruit of which is compliance through physical action I, I wonder if it's also absorption absorption in Allah yeah I mean you see what you what you have um, narrated there it's it's very nice but then so dry I, yeah it's, <laughs> I, I can't i can't i mean i speak to myself i, I try to be a very much practical person yeah. right uh, i can't I, I don't really understand what that means <laughs> <laughs> but i what i try to understand sorry i mean what i, yeah. what I try to understand i mean uh, i'm a simple person you can say right this is probably for really intellectual people but what, what i understand is that when i want to approach a salah right i want to keep my mind with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm. And that's not scary, by the way. Just, and of course, you know, when I talk about this to people, people say, look, you know, there must be a prerequisite here. And I say, what is that? And you say, you have to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first. And I say, yes, of course, you have to, when you, you're a mu'min, you know, you have to come in. Every Muslim comes and prays, right, to mm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But however, I truly believe, and we will come later on into the benefits of salah, I truly believe that a salah, one of its many benefits is that it will give you, it will strengthen this link between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you do not know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then pray. Yeah. But pray with a conscious mind. Now, inshallah, in, uh, this, this is the first of three, uh, inshallah, uh, shows that we will touch upon in the next two, in the final two shows, we will talk about the real practical ways to try to concentrate on salah. What happens before salah, prepare, preparation yeah. for salah, when you say Allahu Akbar, when you, when you enter a salah, when you read al, al, al Surah Al-Hamd and, and, and the other surah, and then during Wuku' Sujood and things like that, um, we have come with a way to, to try to um, make the moment a practical way to make us try to focus more uh, into a salah. Inshallah. Um, and uh, uh, another, another thing well, that is linked to, to this um, yeah. submissiveness, of course, is, is um, sincerity or ikhlas, yeah. as yeah. it's called. Um, I, I think it's interesting in terms of, uh, it, it's, it reminds me of um, you know, the narration that says, um, don't think about the sin, but think about who you've sinned against. Absolutely. Yeah. And, um, and sometimes I, I do reflect on this and I think, well, um, in order to, I mean, it's correct, in order to pray properly, you have to have that kind of conception or some you know, knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Otherwise, yes, you, you don't approach with the right um, attitude or, or, or manner um, or the right respect mm -hmm. even. I'm sure many of us don't even approach, you know, the masala or the prayer mat, we don't approach the whole salah um, with, with, with the correct uh, respect that it, it, it deserves, let, it, let alone yeah. when we're yeah. starting to you know, open, yeah. open the prayer as well. Absolutely, I mean, it's just, uh, uh, I, mean the, I, I, I hope and, and I'm, you know, from my very, very um, humble view here is that I hope, inshallah, our brothers and sisters watching this, they will try to relate um, think about really uh, what's going on in their life yeah. in terms of their salah life. You know, let, let's all pose, let's all, you know, just relax now as you're sitting watching this show, right? Just sit down and try to perhaps after the show 
because now you're listening to the, you're, you're watching mm. the show, so you can't. <laughs> but after you, this show finishes, then perhaps what we can all do is to try to sit down and try to contemplate. In the Quran, the, the issue about contemplation, let's not, you know, let's take it seriously. In the Quran, it says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, those people that remember Allah when they're standing, sitting down, and they're lying yeah. down, and contemplate the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if you have a problem in trying to prove the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your heart, then try to do some sort of contemplation. Yeah. Try to find out why is there, you know, the, the uh, why does Allah subhanahu why do people say there, there is a God and things like that. Yeah. But I do genuinely believe that a salah will lead you to that. And so my very, very humble advice to my brothers and sisters is to try to um, uh, think about what are we actually doing here when we are praying. Okay. We will have to continue this uh, after the break. Thank you very much. You're watching Ahl al Bayt Live on Ahl al Bayt TV, and we're thinking of practical ways to improve our salah. Inshallah, we'll see you after the break. Asalaamu Alaikum. Welcome back to Ahlul Bayt Live on Ahlul Bayt TV. We are talking about the uh, benefits of Salah, how we can improve our concentration uh, in Salah. And uh, if anyone has any questions or comments, do feel free to call in. There was a caller who called in just before we went to break, so please do call back with your question. Or you can leave your comments on Twitter as well. Uh, the tag should be on the screen uh, as well. Um, Obviously, um, it, it is interesting that the Salah is so central to, you know, actually doing the Salah, practicing the Salah is so central to Islam. Because uh, we can think of other religions where there are certain practices where you take it or leave it. You, you can do it or not do it. Yeah. Um, yeah. But there are so many um, narrations on how, you know, the difference between belief and non-belief is the Salah. Absolutely. And, and I was thinking this even means that... Um, even if you're struggling with your concentration, um, or you know your iman has taken a bashing for you know whatever reason, mm. don't give up on the salah. Absolutely, you know? absolutely. Yeah, I mean, there's, there are so many benefits of salah. But just before I go into the benefits of mm. salah, you know, I, I would like to say this to our brothers and sisters, the viewers, is that you know please be patient with us explaining. Because the, the, sometimes you need to, because perhaps people are really waiting for the practical steps to, to you know, they're really wanting to uh, know that, you know, how can I improve my concentration. But I, I find it as a part of the whole package. Before really trying to practically c concentrate into Salah, you need to lay a few foundations. Mm -hmm. uh, and these foundations, you have to uh, have... Uh, have it really uh, strong in your heart. You have to make sure that you understand these concepts of salah before you can actually go to the practical sense. So, inshallah, our brothers and sisters will be patient in terms of you know may, uh, allowing us to try to explain some issues about yeah. the salah before we go into the practical. So, yes, the, if we go back to Al Quran, Karim. Um, we go to the uh, Surah Al-Baqarah, um, verse 238. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Utlu ma uhiya ilayka min al-kitab, wa aqim as-salah, inna as-salah tanha an al-fahshai wa al-bunkar, wa la dhikru Allahi akbar, wa Allahu ya'lamu ma tasna'u. Right? It says, recite what is sent of the book by inspiration to thee, and establish regular prayers. Now, this is where it comes. It says, For prayer restrains from shameful and unjust deeds. And remembrance of Allah is the greatest thing in life. Mm -hmm. Remembrance of Allah is the greatest. Because yeah. it also tells you why we are praying. Because we remember Allah in the morning. We remember Allah during al-Dhuhr. We remember Allah al-Asr. We remember Allah al-Maghrib. We remember Allah al-Isha. And then we sleep. So uh, that is very, very, uh, you know, um, uh, highly recommended that you pray Salatul Layl. Yeah. Which you remember Allah as well Salatul Layl. And then you sleep for a bit. And then you wake up Salatul Fajr. And then you remember Allah as yeah. well. 
right? And then in between them, if you can read the Quran, you remember Allah, so you're always in constant remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? But going back to the ayah, it says, وَأَقِمِ الصَّلَاةِ إِنَّ الصَّلَاةَ تَنْهَا عَنِ الْفَحْشَاءِ وَالْمُنْكَرِ Now, let's everyone, let's just focus on this really important issue. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, look, if you pray, if you pray a salah that, that I have told you to pray, then I give you a guarantee that this prayer will restrain you from shameful mm. and unjust deeds. It's a guarantee. This is what we know. When I was re reading this, I was doing a reality check. I said, Ali, look, if you pray properly, right? Now, you know, some people might argue, it says Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ الصَّلَاةَ تَنْهَا But then again, you come and go back to قُدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ خَاشِعُونَ You go back to, you know, it says salah and khushu' yeah. there's, 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 there's a huge similarity. This is, this is what it, so, this is what it means when it's saying salah will, will, will protect you Absolutely. from degrading yourself. Absolutely, yeah. Um, but again, the type of salah we're talking about is obviously that with Absolutely, sincerity. Absolutely, with sincerity, yes. Yeah. You know, with, with salah, that, that, you know, submissiveness, you know, the salah that, as we said at the start, that you have this link with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala throughout your heart and mind. And if we focus on this, in the salah tanha an al fahshai wal munkar, the salah will restrain from, uh, you from shameful and unjust deeds. You think about it, if it does that, then why do we have so much corruption yeah. in this world? Yeah. Why do we so many of us have, you know, do all sorts of different, uh, you know, sins and, and things that we regret and things like that? Let's just pose a question. How many of us today have actually been angry since the morning till mm. today uh, if a husband and wife have some sort of an argument in front of their children you've sort of uh, the the colleagues at work, colleagues at work yeah. you know, very, you've said something that you shouldn't have said the akhlaq and things like that all of this wouldn't happen if our salah was with khushu and mm. our prophet salah this is Allah saying it's not me Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying he's saying I give you a guarantee then you ask yourself a question, does, is this my, my acts and, and deeds during the day where I have fights with my wife, I have problems with at work and uh, things like that, is this a result of my uh, bad prayer? Mm. I say maybe. Yeah. There might be some other factors, but I say maybe. Right? And so you, if you go back to the Quran, the Quran says we will definitely we will definitely, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will definitely help you, right, in restraining from all these unjust acts if you pray the salah properly. Mm. And that is one of the benefits, the main benefits of the salah. Um, it's also quite interesting that, um, I mean, obviously that it says as well when we pass into the akhirah, when we leave this world, yeah. um, as long as our salah is um, in order, then everything else is in order. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. Also, and also, it's recommend. You know, there are also narrations that say, you know, obviously don't think about worldly things when you're in your salah because Allah subhanahu wa taala is the one who is in charge of your worldly things. Absolutely. So it's it's. I, I find uh, salah an interesting exercise in um, in submission, in letting go, because in our worldly life we're constantly trying to keep. A, keep a control on, mm. on, on everything, manage everything, and, and so projecting into the future, thinking about what we need to do. Um, and it's a very interesting exercise in just completely letting that all go. Absolutely. And, uh, and, and just trusting, putting that trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, the one who, who is managing well, everything. It could be the opposite, you see. You know, you say, you say that, you know, a lot of people, do you think that they use the opportunity that there is a salah so that they can not think about worldly things right. and things like that. But sometimes the opposite, people, well, when they enter salah, everything comes yeah. in. And I'm pretty sure everyone relates to yeah. that. You say, when you say, probably not thinking about anything. Yeah. And when you say, Allahu Akbar, and then comes in, why did you do that? And mm. Why did Liverpool beat blah, blah, at half time, they should have done this and things like that, you know, etc. Why didn't you um, say this to your wife, why did you etc. Everything comes in your head, yeah, yeah. and then suddenly you start to think, which work am I? Yes, now? yeah. Right. So it's it, it's people. Unfortunately, and I'm one of them. We use salah 
to rest our brain in terms of go go back and try to find out you know my worldly things what you know what's happening why did I yeah. do that it's an opportunity for me it should be the opposite it should be when you're not praying to think about oh why did this happen and when you enter salah so it's a it's a it's a very difficult uh, you know a, a, a reverse uh, equation if you like we're trying to reverse this whole equation where the equation says if you pray then think about something uh, worldly. Now, this is what a lot of people do. You yeah. want to reverse this equation and say, no, if you pray, do not think about yeah. anything that is worldly. Yeah. Yeah. And that's very, very difficult. If I may just also the, uh, uh, talk a bit about, you know, the, the benefits of Salah. There's a hadith from Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that says, Man lam tanha salatuhu anil fahshai wal munkar lam yazdid min Allahi illa he says that if your salah is not does not is not a result does not result in in you restraining from these unjust deeds that as like how the ayah says yeah. right if it's not the result if you can't see that in, in your life then you are distancing yourself from Allah subhanahu wa yeah. ta'ala more yeah. and more yeah. right Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is way way I mean metaphorically speaking yeah. way way uh, further than what you think and of course our goal is to always be very close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, there are of course other uh, uh, Imam Ali alayhi salam Amir al-Mu'mineen says wa'lam anna kullu shay'in min amalik taba'un li salatik everything that you do in life is a result of your prayer this is astonishing right, right, right. everything yeah. you do in your life everything from going to sleep from uh, talking to people from uh, you know uh, from uh, from how do you treat your your family etc from whatever at work everything you do your acts that you do is a result of your prayer if your prayer is not good mm -hmm. it doesn't have khushu then as we said your actions yeah. will be bad if your salah has khushu and your deep thinking thoughts with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then your salah and then the, for your actions in life are, are very good. I, I just want to say, <clears throat> again, something personal that when I, when I you know, came into Islam, started to practice Islam, because, again, I used to be like, a little bit reactive, you know, sort of in yeah. terms of, um, you know, reactions to, to things people say or things people do. And I remember observing, I was, I was on a train once where some people were... were um, kind of laughing about hijab basically making kind of indirect sideways jibes and comments in my direction and um, and all I did was just to face them that's all I did was just to face them and they were completely silent um, and I got off after this, I thought that's all I did and and I just thought that that wasn't that wasn't from me mm. because I, I didn't feel kind of the, the need to kind of react you know um, and I think this is the this is the training that, that, that yeah. gradually gradually yeah, yeah. you're trained yeah. to 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 you know not respond to uh, I mean in that case it would be responding to to you know anger or it would be the nafs that's responding so mm -hmm. um, and so it does happen without your you know always being aware of it but um, yeah. that's definitely another as you say another form of training absolutely absolutely I mean it's uh, you know an, uh, another um, narration from Imam Ali alayhi this salam is, this is fantastic if we all just just try to contemplate on this particular hadith you know uh, all our salah will be you know have 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 khushu in it it says لو يعلم المصلي ما يخشاه من جلال الله ما سره أن يرفع رأسه من السجود he says, if the worshipper knew to what extent his Allah's mercy surrounded him during prayer, again, another benefit, yeah. Allah's mercy surrounding him during prayer, he will never raise his head from the straight, uh, state of prostration. Never you will raise your head. We do. You know, the, some people say that uh, when you do sujood, um, you do it, uh, it touches, touches, um, your forehead very quickly. Yeah. You know, just some people just do, you know, just touch yeah, like that and yeah. they go, Subhanallah, yeah, yeah. Subhanallah. But Imam, Imam Ali alayhi salam said, if you really actually knew this mercy that surrounded you during prayer, another benefit of salah, right? If we just understood, contemplated about this, I, I, we will never raise. Yeah, but yeah. a lot of us 
We would just quickly want to raise our our yeah. forehead uh, from from uh, from the uh, turba because from sujood because you know I've got something else yeah, to do yeah. more important than salah obviously yeah right, than than me doing sujood right so you know so I have to hurry up here so you know and then there's if, if I may there's is a fantastic ayah that again just emphasizes that there are so much rich rich um, ayat in the Quran well all, all ayat are rich but the, you know the, the interpretations and if we try to understand these ayat it gives us so much information in in uh, chapter 19 ayah 59 it says Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim فَخَلَفَ مِنْ بَعْدِهِمْ خَلْفٌ أَضَاعُ الصَّلَاةِ وَاتَّبَعُوا الشَّهَوَاتِ فَسَوْفَ يَلْقَوْنَ غَيَّا What does that mean? It starts to talk a bit before that in Surah Al-Maryam this. It starts to talk a bit about the Prophets, Ibrahim, etc. Musa. And then it says there are other people, right, that uh, followed these Prophets and things like that. But then they started to miss prayer. And and the the one of the interpretations I read says that you know these are perhaps uh, Bani Israel those people yeah. who have had the message you know they were but told the message right but then slowly slowly they started to miss the prayer right but what is the the the, the really interesting uh, connection here is that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says who missed prayer and followed after lusts so if you concentrate on this it says that. Allah those who, 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 who missed prayers and so therefore what tabao shahwa so therefore they followed their lust which means that those people who actually pray have this barrier that stops them following their lusts right but if you start to miss your prayer and I actually try to you know in my view interpret it as if you if your prayer is not has, doesn't have much khushu in it then this barrier will be removed and you start to follow your lust Right? So another benefit of a salah, if you pray it, if you pray and you pray it with khushu, then you have this barrier that you will stop you following lust. Mm -hmm. And it's, 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 it's beautiful. It's, it's all mentioned in the Quran. We've, we've just got a couple of comments um, <clears throat> that came in on, on Facebook. I don't know if we, we can answer these right now, but we can try. Um, someone um, has said, why in Maghrib, Isha um, and Fajr do we recite aloud, but in Dhuhr and Asr we, we recite quietly? I mean, there are there are, there are uh, hadith that that state, um, you know, pray during the Fajr and Maghrib and Isha loudly and and during the mm. Asr, you know, quietly. Um, so you know, it's, it's based on on certain authentic hadith yeah. that that yeah. can do that. But I don't I don't think again I don't think you know our brothers and sisters should concentrate on this. I think yeah. for me. You know, I'm, I'm, I hope everyone will forgive me for saying this, but for me, I think there's much more important issues here. Yeah. And which is, you know, um, you know, of course, I need to know why we, you know, we do this and this and that. But let's just try to first of all try to understand um, what is the need and benefit of a salah. And then once I understood, I understand this, and I have this connection with Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, then I will try to make sure that I, I, I fulfill. This promise that I am a mu'min when it says قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ خَاشِعُونَ Remember, I would like to remember, remind myself and my brothers and sisters that you are not a mu'min if you do not have khushu' in your yeah, salah. It's yeah. not me who's saying this. Yeah. Go back to the Quran, the first two hours of Surah Al-Mu'minun, right? It says قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ خَاشِعُونَ And we ask a question, until when? And the Quran has asked this question, Sister Rebecca. It says, the Quran has said, until when uh, do we have to, until when do people, uh, when will people start to have khushu'? It says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim in verse, in chapter 57 in ayah 16, أَلَمْ يَأْنِ لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَنْ تَخْشَعَ قُلُوبُهُمْ بِلِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ he says that has not the time yet come for those who believe that their hearts should be submissive when remembering Allah? Al khushu'. Yeah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has there not, you know, I've given you so many signs. I've given you, uh, you know, the inspiration. You know, I've given you so many benefits of a salah. I've told you, oh, oh my servant, there are so many benefits of a salah. 
Just I want you to concentrate on me. Do I not deserve? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, say, I am your Lord. Do I not deserve you give me a few minutes of your time? If I wanted to go and, and meet, um, uh, if I have an interview of some kind, I go and prepare for it and I wear the best clothes yeah, yeah. And, I, and I put the best perfume in case they, they smell my perfume and I come and sit down you know, and, and then concentrate fully into what yeah. they are saying. Every single detail of the question and things like that. And he's just a human being, yeah. he's an employer who potentially yeah. can employ you or not. But this is Allah. You have an appointment, five appointments. Well, three appointments, but you have five mm. prayers a day, right? With Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your creator. Does he not deserve at least one of those appointments? Let's just say, inshallah, in the, ne in the next two shows, we'll talk a bit more about, you know, concentration and prayer, practical ways to try to, really, really practical ways. No, not like theoretical, let's all suddenly just become 100%, you know, concentrating. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 But really practical ways. But doesn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says here, Alam ya'imi lilladheena aminu, isn't it time? I have, yeah. I have given you everything. Yeah. Come on, it's yeah. time for you to at least give an effort to try to concentrate in the prayer. At least just give an effort. I think um, there are the, certainly um, we talk about you know being you know our thoughts interrupting um, our salah. Yeah. And I don't want to just be so completely negative because I know there are times when, and I'm sure we've all felt this as well, where you know you've been sort of uh, being outside in the city and whatever ever stress is and or you know been on a long journey and and you get to you know your your prayer mat where it is you know always for example in your home or wherever it might be and we can definitely feel those benefits Absolutely. Uh, i mean I, I find that when you when you when you stand on there then <clears throat> you you feel that you know and you 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 know make your your intention towards mm. the kaaba um, you do have that kind of, you know, that peace, that relief that comes. And this is something as well that I, I noticed, again, when I was coming into Islam and I started, and I'm sure this would be for, for people, even more Muslims who are, um, you know, started to practice again, started Absolutely. to pray again. Absolutely. That, uh, uh, interesting what you say about, about sujood, where you, you know, you, you can feel something it's very interesting, the practice of, of sujood, where you feel the burdens from your shoulders being you know, lifted. Absolutely beautiful. And, yeah. um, uh, and, and as you say, unfortunately, and, and this is what is even more incredible, is that although we have it already experienced the benefits, Absolutely, the yeah. peace and the burdens yeah. being lifted, even then we don't it's mm. not an incentive oh i want to pray yeah. better yeah. next time yeah. it's it'll be oh this time i'm distracted yeah. and this time i'm not in a good yeah. mood and Absolutely. you know so I mean, they, they, you know it's interesting you mentioned this because um you know i keep on saying in the next two shows people are sick of it now but yeah. you know, inshallah the next two shows we'll, we'll follow every single um, um act of a salah and you know we'll try to also talk a bit about the spiritual side of things but it's interesting also you say that you know about anger because uh, you know, in preparation for salah, um, how many of us just come just before we want to pray, we're either um, angry, fed up, um, uh, either or probably ecstatic about something yeah, that yeah. you know, um, laughing about laughing something, about something yeah. joking with friends, you know, joking uh, yeah, about this thing. Yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry, mate, I just have to pray yeah, for that. You yeah. take the talk about Allah, Akbar, mm -hmm. and you still you hearing your friends still joking yeah. and things like that, and then when you finish your prayer, you have no idea what you've just said. But most importantly, you finished your prayer, right? And how many of us just go through this? Uh, and and and. I, I find it, you know, I say this on TV, I've done this, right? And I'm not, you know, I'm, you know it's, it's, uh, I actually say it with deep, deep regret, but, you know, I, I have done this, and I'm pretty sure a lot of people can relate to that yeah. as well. But don't we think this is disrespectful? Yeah, yeah. I mean, if, 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 you know, we'll respect our parents, if our parents were waiting for us, just waiting, and I keep on talking to friends, yeah, and things like that, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, I, and I'll come to talk to my parents, but I'm not really paying attention to them. I'm still mm. listening to it, and I still, you know, things like That's disrespectful to my parents. What about this Allah? Let's all wake up here. This is Allah. Okay, thank you very much. We've got to go to break, and it's a time for some contemplation during the break. Inshallah, we will be back after a few minutes. Assalamu
Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to Ahlul Bayt Live on Ahlul Bayt TV with Dr. Ali Al Hilli, and we're talking about <coughs> the benefits of salah. And uh, <coughs> we were just talking about again, sort of having the right respect when you go on, on the prayer mat. That again, having submissiveness or khushu, as it says um, before Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, is really again about having the right respect for Allah, absolutely, um, absolutely. and that uh, you can't just kind of get on your prayer in a kind of careless way absolutely, and just yeah. do your salah and finish mm. and feel that you've done your mm. your your salah absolutely i mean you know the question to ask is what about time you know there yeah. a lot of people think that okay you know um i'm going to show this respect to allah right but at my own time yeah you know, yeah uh, there are some people unfortunately uh you know i was i was actually was told off once at work you know, um, uh, I've, I've sort of changed now, but you know, the, the previous um, my uh, line manager, they used to say that you know we've we've no noticed that you you know sometimes go out and pray. Why don't you just pray all of it at one? And this guy was oh, a Muslim. Right. Okay. He was a oh. Muslim as well. You know, that's that's the disappointing part. Yeah. Thinking, why don't you just sort of combine all of them at night? I do that. He told me I do that. Oh wow. So why don't, yeah. So obviously he's missing the whole point. Yeah. You know, and and it poses a very important question. What about time? Right? And if we go back to the Quran, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, فَإِذَا قَضَيْتُمُ الصَّلَاةَ فَاذْكُرُوا اللَّهَ قِيَامًا وَقُعُودًا وَعَلَى جُنُوبِكُمْ فَإِذَا اطْمَأْنَنْتُمْ فَإِذَا اطْمَأْنَنْتُمْ فَأَقِيمُوا الصَّلَاءَ إِنَّ الصَّلَاةَ كَانَتْ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ كِتَابًا مَوْقُوتًا when you pass congregational prayers, celebrate Allah praises, standing, sitting down and lying down. So basically celebrating, remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, فَاذْكُرُوا اللَّهَ or lying down, or on your sides, but when you are free from danger, this is free from danger when, when they used to be during wars and battles and mm -hmm. things like that. Set up regular prayers, right? For such prayers are enjoined on believers at stated times. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given, as we stated before, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us stated times. Morning, remember Allah. Wake up, yeah. remember Allah, yeah, yeah. right? Drag you out of your beautiful sleep. I mean, it's <laughs> such a beautiful sleep. And you think, you know, alarm goes, oh no, just, you know, snooze it. And then you go around, snooze it, you know, snooze it. But sunshine, you know, the, there's going to be a sunrise yeah. in, in five minutes, get up quickly, go and pray, and things like that. Unfortunately, that seems to be the, the, the norm, mm. unfortunately. Mm. Well, inshallah, it's not, right? I just wanted to say, someone um, joined me to a group, called, and I have to say this because it's very interesting. The, the title of the group is, You Think You're Strong? Try lifting your blanket at Fajr time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So that's something. Yeah, that, yeah. I'll join that as well. Um, but the, 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 the issue is that, that we don't have this concept of time. But the, there are so many diff uh, benefits of, of time. The first benefit, as we mentioned, is you remember Allah. Remember Allah in the morning, Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib, yeah. Asr. Remember, 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 remember Allah. That's the yeah, first thing. Yeah. The second thing, it actually structures your day. It actually gives you the concept of time. Yeah, yeah. Imam Ali alayhi salam says, أُوصِيكُمْ بِتَقْوَ اللَّهِ وَنَظْمِ أَمْرِكُمْ Imam Ali says that I advise you to fear Allah and structure your life. Structure your life. Not, you know, unfortunately we have the youths that, you know, perhaps weekends or during the day, some people unfortunately don't have work, wake, wake up, stay until four or four, five, you know, three or four, sleep, and they don't wake up for Salat al-Fajr because he was really yeah. sleepy at three because they've slept late, yeah. right? And that's a very important thing. You know, uh, happens to all of us. But you can't give an excuse to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, you know, you woke up and it's already been sunrise. Why didn't you sleep earlier? You could sleep, if you think you're a heavy sleeper, sleep at 11. Yeah. You know, sleep at 10, 30, 11. If you think you know you, get, you wake up, and you know, in the, in the coming, the time is going to change in the UK here, and you know, we're going to have the, the Fajr time earlier. I yeah. Think, you know, so it's going to be, uh, so summer time is going to be longer d during the day, and then, so, you know, if it's going to be the Fajr time around 3, and you sleep at 1, obviously you've gone into deep sleep. So you can't really wake up at, at, at 3 o'clock or 4 or yeah. whenever sunrise is after that. So anyway, you can sleep early to wake up for Fajr. But then, then again, you know, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to structure our day. You know, in the morning, Fuhur, Asr, mm. you know, uh, Maghrib, Isha, you have a beautiful structure and we can, we can organize our life based on, on this time. It's also, there's, again, just some observations that, you know, you think to yourself when, when, when you are, you know, 
praying at Fajr time. These th these are very special moments of the day. Absolutely. That, um, that uh, and you think to yourself, actually, the people in this city or the people in my town who are not Muslim, who are not, or who are not, you know, other people might be of other religions being up as well at this time, but. Uh, people who aren't are missing a very, a very special, very pure moment. Absolutely. And also the same with Maghrib. I think the same with Maghrib, where, you know, where Maghrib, f you know, for for us is a is a significant time of the day. It's the turning of the day into the night. It's that it, 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 again. It's another special moment of sort of transformation. And then, but you think, you look at, again around you in the city, people are just carrying on as normal. Carrying on as normal, It's like, yeah. it's like okay, day, night, it doesn't matter, you Absolutely. know, no yeah. difference. Absolutely. So... And it's amazing, this, this, if you think about it, this time issue, you know, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is calling for you, He says, Oh, mu'min, remember, am I a mu'min? That's the first question to ask. But, Oh, mu'min, pray. It's Allah's calling. Yeah. You know, oh, mu'min, it's the time of the prayer. Allah's calling. Oh, mu'min, pray. You think, what, what, I'm... Better finish watching this show first, then I go to prayer, and then quickly after I finish the show, I will go and pray, because when I pray, you know, I'm still going to remember what's happening in the show, so I will yeah. concentrate nothing. Yeah. I will not concentrate. If I may, there's a beautiful hadith um, which was narrated in um, by uh, Imam Sadiq alayhi salam and was was uh, added uh, was written in Adab um, al-Salaf mm -hmm. Imam Khomeini. It's an amazing hadith, if we really, really find out what's, what's the true meaning of this hadith. It says, مَنْ صَلَّ الصَّلَوَاتِ الْمَفْرُوضَاتِ Right? Ruwaya and Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam. It says, مَنْ صَلَّ الصَّلَوَاتِ الْمَفْرُوضَاتِ Whoever uh, prays the obligatory prayers, right? فِي أَوَّلِ وَقْتِهَا At the start of his time. Right, some people say that you know uh, here you, you know means that awal uh, waqtiha means you pray at the time where you know you're allowed to pray. Right. Yeah. Okay. But you know it also has this interpretation where you pray at the start, the time of the prayer. Fi awal waqtiha wa aqama hududha, and you actually do is prerequisites. So there are prerequisites which we'll talk about inshallah of, of the prayer. Sorry. Rafaah al malaku ila sama. After you finish your prayer. So I've come in and said, Allah Akbar, Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. And Malik Angel will come and take this prayer. Mm. Lift it to the sky. Right? Bayva naqiyya. You know, the, the, the prayer is white and pure. Because you prayed it on time. Right? Take it. And the prayer is actually saying, Hafadakallah kama hafadtani. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take care of you as how you took care of me. Estawda'ani malakun kareem A beautiful malik, an angel, has taken me to the sky. Now, if you pray this on time. However, وَمَنْ صَلَّاهَا بَعْدَ وَقْتِهَا Whoever prayed it after his time. Again, you know, there are interpretations that say if you, if you miss the whole prayer. You know, but let's, you know, uh, say here that if you miss this one hour period, yeah. the start of the prayer. وَمَنْ صَلَّهَا بَعْدَ وَقْتِهَا مِنْ غَيْرِ إِلَّا Without an excuse. This is also quite important because you, know, you have to have a very legitimate excuse not to pray it on time. وَلَمْ يُقِمْ حُدُودَهَا And you did not um, practice its prerequisites. رَفَعَهَا الْمَلَكُ إِلَى السَّمَاءِ Again, the Malik will take it, the angel will take your, your salah to the sky. Right? سَوْدَى Black, dark, مظلمة. Right? وَهِيَ تَحْتِفُ it says, you have lost me. May Allah lose you as how you have lost me. And may Allah does not take care of you like how you did not take care of me. It's, it sounds, sounds quite horrific. Yeah, yeah right? it does. But it just gives you both. If we take the both interpretations, as is in the time of the prayer words, when it says Allahu Akbar, Adhan says Allahu Akbar, now you have to pray. Or even the importance of salah, even some people say that, you know, I, don't, I just don't have time. Some, uh, mm. you know, I don't have time during my work to pray, so I come back home and pray. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I, what, what sorry? I, yeah, I have to, I have to say, I, I, I do believe Allah SWT will help people um, to, to find a way of praying at, at, at work. And, and, and I heard a similar thing. He said, I don't pray anymore. 
oh, well, you know, work got in the way, and you know, mm. and you think, okay, <laughs> um, but but it's it's all part of striving to to Absolutely. to establish that, Absolutely. and uh, and I know even in the financial centre of London, down in um, down in uh, Canary Wharf. You know, they do have, they even have a prayer room down Friday there. Friday prayers, I heard. Yeah, in Canary yeah. Wolf, they have even, the, our brothers have come up, and, you know, the people who work in Canary Wolf, they have come and, you know, and they've, they've established Friday prayers there. And it's, it's, it's so, I, I think it's, it's easy to, to do. You know, the, I, had a, I have a friend who says that he asked, when he was employed in, in his job, uh, he asked his employer, his boss, he told him, I have just one thing to ask you. And he said, what is, what is that? And he said, um, of course, this person wasn't a Muslim, his employer. Yeah. And he told him, well, I have to pray, you know, um, uh, during work. And he said, that's absolutely fine. He said, okay, look, I'm going to give you this office. This is all for you to pray, right? And please tell me, what else can I do? And then what else he did, if I remember correctly, he said it was a glass door. He, start, he started to cover the glass door so no one can actually wow. um, interfere with this guy while he's praying. Amazing. So yes. this guy knew about more about concentrating in prayer yes. than a lot of yes. us do. Yes. Right? He, the the non-Muslim thought, okay, prayer means concentrate, and prayer means devotion to Allah or to your Lord. Yeah. Right. So therefore, no one can distract you. And and a lot of the people. I mean, I've lived here for quite a time, and and you know, you, you very well also know that that a lot of people people here are, are understanding. You yeah. know, you know, the employees are understanding. They they tell you, you know, you know, you have you 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 have something you need to do, you know, which is personal. You know, and you want to pray, that's absolutely fine. We have, of course, universities, there's prayer rooms at work, just find a small space. Mm. But it is not an excuse. And some people say, oh, you know, he's harsh. But the maraja say that. You know, our, our, our respected scholars say that, that it is forbidden on any mu'min to leave a salah. Even in, in, in all sorts of circumstances, you have to find a, you know, because there is opportunity for you to pray even you know they, they some people give examples that when when you are uh, sort of coming down from a, a, you know falling from the sky and the time of prayer comes in you can pray with your eyes oh, the yeah. time of prayer just just pray with your eyes even then you can't leave it some people you know they, they a lot of people travel and when they when when it's time of the prayer during during uh, in, in, the, in the plane they say oh how am i supposed to pray but go back to the ulama they say you can some people some ulama say you're allowed to pray while you're seated yeah right and some of them say you know you just stand up or if, you, if there is space in some airlines you know, uh, you know, just go and pray. There's no excuse for anyone to leave there. Yeah. Their also, it's a good way of it's a good way of um, of 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 just uh, I'll say getting people used to salah. Um, and uh, you know, I mean, I've seen Muslims pray in museums. You know, and, uh, and, uh, mm -hmm. and it's 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 a good way of um, I think, especially you know, in normal countries of. Um, of normalizing it. I do know, um, in fact, I spoke to one sister uh, who's Russian, and in Russia it, 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 it is very difficult. Mm. Uh, I know that. It's much harder than here. Mm. Someone was um, discovered to to be praying um, in the company. It was, it, it's the culture where uh, you're deeply suspect if you pray, and he and he he was praying secretly. He was found out, and I think he was he was even fired. But I would say it's part of it's it's part of the struggle. It's not it's not easy. I mean, I've worked in in places where they're not Muslim, and um, and somehow you have to find a way of of, of, yeah. of, uh, of praying. Yeah, I mean, they're, 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 I'm pretty sure there are people out there in this world. I mean, I gave an example of Britain. I think Brit British people are very understanding of, of this issue but of course as you as you rightly said there are people who are much more find it much more difficult uh, but still you know this person who, who got fired I think that he will get so much thawab yeah. in front of Allah yeah. subhanahu wa ta'ala that you know he got fired because he devoted himself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he, he you know there was this is this was the the the, the it's a test, so this right? was the test and yeah. this was the, the, the you know, if we go back to the battle of Imam Hussein alayhi salam so. that was the main issue you know making people Prioritize what's more important. Is it more important that I devote myself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or just know I more important is for me work and get money and things yeah. like that? And I'm pretty sure Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open the door for uh, with more other opportunities yeah. for you. Yeah. If you got five from here, you will get a prayer from yeah. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to test you as you rightly say. And can I also say um, that that you know all all this said about concentrating in prayer and khushu' it sounds you know, uh, qu quite difficult and things like when people say, and people have practiced it difficult. It's okay for us, at the end of all this, to say, it's, I think it's okay 
let's not despair that you know we, we're not really finding this concentration mm. it's okay right but however what's important is that we should strive to try to concentrate in our salah because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows his his his, uh, you know, his servants right he knows he has created us so perhaps he expects us not to fully concentrate in a salah mm. and you know it's it's uh, yeah, Allah, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the weakness of of his his servants then I'm sure you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will 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 forgive us inshallah for for not concentrating much on our prayer or, or, or if we ask for assistance for concentration absolutely we well. ask for us but there's no excuse in us sitting down right in our code and and watching TV and then going and, and praying and think because you're asking for it mm -hmm. if I'm really angry and shouting and things or I'm laughing as we said before yeah. and I go and pray I'm asking for it I'm asking for not yeah concentrating yeah you know but I can I can set the environment at least one of my prayer inshallah we'll talk about this more later and other shows that one of my prayer let me just devote it to Allah subhanahu mm -hmm. wa ta'ala yeah that this is this is perhaps you know, I was, you know, it's, a good, it's a good way to start. It's Absolutely, a good way to, start. Good way to perhaps then you start to build, make it. I mean, of course, we want every salah should be, you know, as we say, devoted. But as you say, with um, with with specific um, mm. preparation and, and intention. Um, there's something else that I, I read about the benefit of praying on time. Yeah. Where the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him and his family, in Kanzal al Umal, he says the example of the five daily prayer is like, oh, well, we know that one. There's, there's another one. Yeah, here it is. I have a covenant. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I have a covenant with my servant that if he offers his prayer at their stipulated times, I shall not chastise him and shall place him in paradise without any reckoning. Absolutely. So. But, I mean, you might ask, why did, why yeah. did he say that? And, and you know, the, Let's always ask why. You know, why did did he do the, uh, say all this? Because this is much benefits yeah. of that. You know, time of salah. Not not just because, of course, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has said, and that's the ultimate thing. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has ordered us to pray on time. But then there are benefits for that. And as we said, you know, the structure and, and, and your structures your life and, and things like that. And you remember Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. And as uh, Imam Ali alayhi salam has said, that surely when a person engages in prayer. Um, his body, his clothes, and everything around him um, glorifies um, glorify Allah Subhanahu Absolutely. wa Taala uh, as well. Um, we did have one question, and again on on the Facebook that says, "Why shouldn't you close your eyes in prayer?" I know that there's some kind of discussion between. Yeah. Um, there are different narrations on on whether it's permissible or recommended or discouraged to to close the eyes in. Yeah, I mean, as far as as far as I am aware. Um, there, you know, it's not forbidden to close your eyes during prayer, as far as I am aware. Um, but I don't claim to be a scholar. Um, but you know, uh, in fact, in some instances, I, I, I think it might help you to, to uh, concentrate in your prayer. But some people might say, you know, during Fajr prayers, you know, it, it is makru to close your eyes because you might go yeah, to sleep and yeah. things like that. Uh, you know, I have heard. Um, may that may be the case. Um, but uh, inshallah we will elaborate further on, on this inshallah we can look at that for the, yeah. for the for the next program yeah, inshallah. Uh, inshallah and um, yes i mean there's also um, some narrations about obviously um, carelessness um, as well yeah. um, as you were talking about people who who, who do you know such very quickly and um, even the Pro holy prophet peace be upon him and his family has said um, someone who prays like that he says this person pecks as a crow pecks mm. should he die in the state of his prayer be as they are now Absolutely. he shall surely not die upon my religion Absolutely. so yeah. i mean it, it, it's interesting don't you think that reason he said that he should not die upon my religion i mean he's not a mu'min or a muslim. yes yeah well you can say he's not a muslim but certainly he's not a mu'min right yeah. and that goes back to the the the, the, the ayah says qad aflah al mu'minun alladhina hum fi salatihim khashi'un right those people who don't, you know, they, they, they just do quickly sujood and things. Obviously, they don't have the khushu in them. So they're not mu'mineen. Yeah. Right. Um, I, you know, I, I, there are hadith that say that, you know, uh, it, 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 the, you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept uh, whatever, uh, accept your prayer and to how much you have actually concentrated. Yeah. So if you've concentrated 50% of your prayer, 
and Allah subhanahu will accept 50 percent and, and things like that. And, and, and also it's recognized that um, I, I have also read uh, and, and sorry I don't have the narration exactly here but again that um, the that yes it is acknowledged that your, your mind can wander but the point is that you, you bring yourself back absolutely, you bring absolutely, the mind back yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, it's, to that it's, concentration. Yeah, I mean the, what we wanted uh, I, I know we don't have time to talk much about attention, how much time we have? We just got five minutes. Five minutes. Yeah. So, so perhaps in the, in the next, if, if 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 I may, in the next few minutes, just um, and inshallah we'll finish about this later on. Is that you know this this concept of attention is actually a cognitive process. You know when now now what we've done today, just to recap to everyone, is that what we've done today we've we've talked a bit about um, al khushu' fi yeah. salah. We've said. That you are not a mu'min if you don't have khushu' in your salah, and that's what the Quran said, right? And then we say, what is this khushu'? We've explained what this khushu'? is relatedness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through your heart and mind, submissiveness, sincerity, etc., etc. And we've given narrate, uh, some ayat that that, uh, that emphasizes the khushu' and then uh, found out this importance of khushu' but then was the benefits of salah. We talked about the benefits of salah. All this as prerequisites so that we can understand our salah, so that we can, we can link mm -hmm. to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We've talked also about the time of, of a salah. Now, if we, knowing all this, what we need to also understand is we need to master one cognitive process which is called attention, right? This attention is actually studied and is continuously studied in, 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 in the psychology field. Uh, and, and it's actually defined as, as, as a cognitive process that you um, concentrate on something and not, um, uh, not concentrating on the, uh, things that are surrounding you. Yeah. Right? So you focus on one particular thing. And this is what we need to, we need to master this. We yeah. need to actually master attention. But what I think has happened, right, uh, is that our mind has learned a salah and when our mind sort of learns and gets used to something, it stops paying attention yes, to it. Yes, yes. I'll give you an example. If we, um, and I've given this example before, if we um, pre um, f um, drive a car, right, and some of us who drive a manual car, right, and the first time when you will learn about driving a car, you, they tell you this is gear one, gear two, gear three, gear four, gear five, and some of them have gear six these days, right? So you, you, you learn that, yeah. and then once you're changing gears, you say, oh, gear one, gear two, I have to do gear three, oh, I forgot, I've gone from gear four to gear five, or whatever, right? You're paying attention. Yeah. Your mind, this is new to your mind, your mind is saying, what is this? I've not heard this before, I've not seen this before. But then again, when you start to drive more and more and more, you don't keep on thinking about changing gears. It yeah, comes naturally yeah, yeah. because your mind has taken it uh, on, uh, an, you know, it's an auto thing, right? Uh, as salah, I find it, it's a very similar thing. Because we pray uh, five, three times a day, five prayers a day, right? Um, al al our mind, and we keep on repeating the same things, alhamdulillah, and then yes. you know, also inshallah, we will go on to varying the, the second surah. We keep on repeating very similar surah, the second surah, uh, which a mu'min has the option of changing and things like that. Then, then, then our mind keeps on thinking, this, this I know, so we don't need to pay attention to it. So it's about changing our salah. And I say this finally so that inshallah yeah. people will tune in next week. It's about changing the way that we pray. So we tell our mind to focus. In addition to, of course, having understanding this of the submissiveness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Excellent. Thank you very much. I hope you found that useful. Please do keep a pen and paper and make a note of the ayahs uh, that have been mentioned so you don't lose what has been lost in the show. Thank you very much, Dr. Ali al Hilli. And inshallah, we will be back next Tuesday uh, to continue uh, with this subject. And uh, may Allah assist us all in increasing our concentration in our salah. And we'll see you, inshallah. I will be back on Saturday evening. Inshallah, Salaam Alaikum. Salaam Alaikum. Right, we're going to do take two on this show tonight.
My name is Rebecca Masterton. You're watching Ahl al -Bayt live on Ahl al -Bayt TV. Sorry, the sound just went a little bit earlier. My guest is Dr. Ali Al-Hilli, and tonight we're going to be talking about concentration in prayer. But before we continue, we just wanted to, again, ask uh, our viewers to read Surah Al-Fatiha uh, for Imam Abdallah Dadu, who has uh, been sadly killed in Belgium. We pray and beseech uh, all Muslims around the world of whatever school of thought to wake up to the fact that killing is not going to resolve anything. Uh, please read Fatiha for Imam Abdullah Dadu. And uh, we send condolences uh, to his uh, family uh, as well. Um, to continue with the with the topic, um, the concentration in in, in prayer. Uh, as I said before, we came back on air. Um, this is the issue of salah is so central, and yet um, there is some benefit in my salah then why am I not getting this benefit? Yeah. Is there something wrong in my salah? Am I doing it not, you know, incorrectly? So all these questions came in my mind and I thought surely there must be an answer. Surely there must be something that I'm doing wrong. So I went on, on, a, on a journey to try to investigate further into what's going on. So when you, when you try to investigate further, we've all heard so many lectures about salah and khushu from our ulama uh, and the respected uh, scholars, but um, but you know, when we hear about them, you know, we understand that you know the salah is important. Yeah. We have to pray five times a day. You know, it's a, one of the pillars of Islam, etc., etc. But have we actually paused for a second, right, in our fast, fast-moving life? It's such a fast-moving life, you know. Um, have we actually paused and just thought for a few minutes? We do some tafakkur, contemplation, which is very important, yeah. right? Just think about what am I doing here? What am I doing when I approach the Salah and say Allahu Akbar until I say Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh? Right? What, what's happening here? Mm. Is it just because, as I said, because you know, uh, I have to because I'm a Muslim? So you know, when people come and tell me, ask me, what, what are you doing going up and down and things like that? I tell them, well, you know, it's part of our faith and we have to do that. Yeah. Is that the answer? Or is it much more deep than that? Um, I think it's much more deep mm. than that. In fact, it's not me who thinks much more deep than that. It's one that when you read that start, it says that the believers are eventually uh, victorious. Yeah. They will win. And when you first start to read that, you think, yes, fantastic, I'm a mu'min. I've called myself a mu'min. Yeah. I'm going to win. I am victorious. I am victorious over all the non mu'minin. But then again, wait, I tell you. Go to the next ayah. It says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Qad aflah al-mu'minun al-ladheena hum fi salatihim khashu'un. That's the first thing. Then I ask myself, and I ask my brothers and sisters, are you still the mu'min you thought you were in mm -hmm. the first ayah? Basically saying those who, who have khashu' in their salah. Absolutely. Yeah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not say, al-ladheena hum yusallun. Yeah. Those who just pray. Because inshallah all of us pray. But there's a very, very, very important difference between الَّذِينَ هُمْ يُصَلُّونَ and الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ خَشُونَ yeah, yeah. Those who actually have khushu' in their salah. Now, this poses a very in interesting question. It says, does that mean that I'm not a mu'min if my salah doesn't have khushu'? Yes, that's what it means. That's not mm -hmm. my interpretation. Go back to the ayah. This yeah. is what it means. It means that if you, are not, if you do not have khushu' in your salah, then you're not really a mu'min. And this is striking. It was really striking for me when I first read about it. I thought, surely I'm a mu'min, yeah, I'm praying. Yeah, yeah. yeah, right? But then you think, no, you're not. If you really don't have this khushu' in your salah, you're not a mu'min. So what is this khushu'? What is it? Mm. What is this? We, we really don't give it enough thought, I think. Uh, so tonight, inshallah, we're going to be talking a little bit about, first of all, you wanted to raise um, the aspect of submissiveness in prayer or khushu'. Um, 
Can I ask first of all why you wanted to raise this and, and what is the definition? A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem Bismillahir rahmanir rahim Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen Wa salatu wa salamu ala muhammadin wa ala ahli baytihi al-tayyibin al-tahirin I'd like to first of all also send my condolences to the family of uh, the Imam who was uh, killed uh, in Belgium uh, today uh, and it's a great tragedy unfortunately to see such a uh, terrible uh, event happening and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to unite this ummah to bring people together and to remove this hatred from people's hearts. Mm -hmm. <coughs> um, I started thinking a lot about uh, concentrating in prayer a few years ago uh, when it struck me that uh, we pray five ta three times a day, five prayers a day, and uh, it's a daily process. You know, and wake up in the morning, we pray Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib, Isha. But then again, you start to feel how much am I getting out of this prayer? You know, is it really benefiting my life? Why am I doing this? Is it just a physical exercise where you get up and go down and things like that? Um, or is there something, if the Quran it tells you it's much, much more deep than that? And as you rightly said, it's the concept of al-khushu' and salah. There is a difference between a salah that you just pray for the sake of praying because you're a Muslim and you have to pray, mm. right? And there's a difference also between a salah that has this khushu in it. A salah, when you approach a salah, you are in an environment where, where you do not pay attention to anything else that is happening around you, yeah. but only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your heart is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? There's a huge difference between the two. And I am pretty sure uh, the brother, the brothers and sisters who are watching this uh, will, um, will really um, relate to what I'm actually talking yeah. about. Because this, this issue, everyone, is, inshallah, is, is actually practicing it. You know? So when someone talks about these things, people will say, you know, they actually relate to this. Mm -hmm. They think, yeah, you know, this is, this is, this is, this is you know, my, my salah was like this. It should be like this. Or In the Quran, if we start off, uh, with the Holy Quran, it's beautiful ayat in the Quran. When we go back to the Quran and we try to investigate this issue about al khushu in Surah Al Mu'minun, right? Surah Al Mu'minun starts off uh, talking about who are the Mu'minun, the true Mu'minun, right? Uh, who are the true believers? And it says at the start, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Qad Aflah Al Mu'minun. 